Hello everyone. In this lecture today, I'm going to talk to you about what is qPCR experiment, how to design qPCR experiment, and what are the different kinds of control that can be used in qPCR experiments. Let's first talk about what is qPCR. qPCR or simply quantitative PCR is one of the most powerful techniques that can be used for the quantification of nucleic acid molecules in biological and environmental samples. QPCR is one of the most powerful technique that is used to measure the gene expression. The, uh, we can use, use QPCR technique to measure the gene expression um, between control and the treatment sample as shown in this figure here. As you can see that the gene that has, whose expression has been measured is HNO4-alpha. And we have here two kinds of sample. One is control sample and the other one is the treatment sample. As you can see that the expression level of HNO4-alpha is much lower in treatment sample compared to the control sample. So hence, this qPCR experiment can be used to measure uh, the expression uh, difference between control and the treatment group. Another example of gene expression measurement is the measurement of a particular gene expressed in the different tissues. As shown here in this, this graph here, as you can see that the gene that has been measured is COL1A1. As you can see that the expression level of COL1A1 is different among different tissues. The tissues are indicated by the numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4. In tissue 1, the expression is the least, whereas in tissue 2 and 3, the expression is much higher than in tissue 1 and tissue 4, Whereas in tissue 4, the expression level is much higher than in tissue 1, but much lower than in tissue 2 and 3. Hence, this qPCR technique can be used to measure gene expression, where we can compare the expression of a particular gene between control and the treatment sample, and also we can compare the expression of a particular gene between different tissues. So this is one of the biggest importance of qPCR experiments. So then how to design the qPCR experiment? So first, after performing your experiment, so what you have to do? You have to isolate the RNA from your sample. Your sample can be tissue sample or the cell sample. Then you are going to isolate the total RNA from your sample. Then you ha when you have isolated your RNA, then you will perform reverse transcription um, to make the cDNA from the RNA. And after you have made the cDNA, then you have to set up the qPCR plate. To set up the qPCR plate, of course, you have to prepare the master mix. You will use the, gene, you will use the primers that are specific for your gene of interest, okay? Primers specific for your gene of interest and primer specific for the reference gene, okay? Primer specific for the reference gene your gene of interest, and the reference gene such as GAPDH, okay? Reference gene is such as GAPDH. Reference gene is the one whose expression is supposed to be not, supposed to be stable or not changed um, upon the treatment, okay? So, so then how are you going to set up your qPCR plate? Okay, so, uh, so you prepare master mix, of course, using these specific primers, and then you will put your master mix in these different wells. So basically, you'll have your sample, experimental sample, and the control sample. Your experimental sample, you have to have it have it in uh, at least uh, three biological replicates. So what are biological replicates? Biological replicates are the different samples that belong to the same group, okay? So for example, this is the experimental group, and we have here three biological replicates that have received the same treatment. And we also have three biological replicates for the control group, okay, which have not received any treatment. Then what are technical replicates? Technical replicates are the repetition of the same sample. For example, you have one biological replicate, let's say A, and then if you repeat this sample two times, A, A, so this is going to be the technical replicate. So as shown here, you can see that uh, this is the gene of interest, and this here is the reference gene. For the gene of interest, we have three technical replicates for one biological replicate. And for the next biological replicate, also we have three technical replicate. And, the fur, uh, and also for the third biological replicate, we have 
uh, three technical replicate. So uh, same holds true for the reference gene. Here we have three uh, technical replicates. This is one biological replicate, three technical replicates, another biological replicate, and three technical replicate, another biological replicate. So, and same holds true for our control sample. You can see in pair of three, 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 in a group of three, three, and three. So one, two, and three biological replicates. Okay, so this is how you are going to design your qPCR plate. You will have your zone of interest, reference scene, and you will have your samples. Of course, you have to put uh, the qPCR mix. Okay, so then after uh, putting uh, the samples, after loading the samples in this plate, then what are you going to do? You will, you will insert this plate in the qPCR machine, and then you will run the program. And after running the program, you will get the data and the data that you will get will give you the city values, okay? Will give you the city values. So from the city values, actually you can determine fold chains or the relative expression level of gene, and you can compare the expression level of the gene between your treatment, treatment experimental sample and also the control sample. I have already explained how to uh, perform the analysis of the qPCR data in Excel sheet in my previous video. You can watch that video, the link for which has been provided in the description of this video. So in this part of the slide, I'm gonna talk about what are the different kinds of controls that can be used in qPCR experiments. One of the most commonly used control is no template control. No template control is that in this control, you will not have any cDNA, okay? You will not have any cDNA. That means uh, this will om omit any DNA or RNA template from a reaction. And this serves as a general control for ex ex extraneous nucleic acid contamination. When using cyber green chemistry, this also serves as an important control for primer dimer formation, okay? No template control for uh, to detect if there is any contamination from DNA or the RNA. So in basically here, we are, we are not putting our cDNA that we have synthesized. Another type of control that can be used in qPCR experiment is called no reverse transcription control or minus RT, reverse transcription control. That means this control involves carrying out the reverse transcription step of the qPCR experiment, but this reverse transcription uh, will be in the absence of reverse transcriptase. So this controls, assesses the amount of DNA contamination present in an RNA preparation. So basically, during the uh, cDNA synthesis process, we have our RNA, and the, from the RNA, we make the cDNA, okay? We make the cDNA. So then, if, uh, so then this control is, so we use the enzyme called transcriptase, right? This transcriptase is reverse transcriptase, okay? Reverse transcriptase. So if we don't put reverse transcriptase, then we expect that this RNA is not converted into the cDNA, okay? If we see any signal in this minus RT control sample, that means that there is contamination from the DNA. So to detect the presence of DNA in the, in the, in the, in the sample, uh, we use minus RT control. It's also a very, very important negative control in qPCR experiment. So then Final type of control is called no treatment control. So here, basically, if you have two samples, let's say one is experimental sample and the other, other is your control sample. So in the control sample, you are not going to put any treatment. You are going to, going to leave it as 